Welcome to Key Tech. Please describe this channel if you are interesting in today's video. Since the United States cut off supply to Huawei, its Western allies have also joined the camp to contain China in the semiconductor field. The calls for Chinese chips in China are unprecedentedly high, ranging from national macro policies to private capital investment. Semiconductors have become an absolute outlet for various industries in China in the past three years. With a large amount of capital rushing into the semiconductor industry, the domestic integrated circuit field has suddenly become a red sea. According to incomplete statistics, since Huawei cut off supply, the semiconductor industry has introduced at least 560 billion capital injections. Many people in domestic semiconductors are optimistic that, like display panels, they have heavy capital blessings. China chip will buck the trend and break the situation just around the corner. Even Bill Gates, who is far away in the United States, can't stand it anymore. He has repeatedly called on the United States to lift the ban and stop the suppression, otherwise China's self-developed chips will inevitably cause backlash. However, looking back at the wave of semiconductors that started three years ago, has our semiconductor industry really counterattacked? Three years have passed, and the capital that entered the market under the chip boom has left the market one after another. In 2022 alone, nearly 5,700 semiconductor companies have been deregistered. After all, under the support of policies and the guidance of public opinion, many investors invested in this trend with enthusiasm, and even some small companies recruited seven or eight people, raised hundreds of thousands of yuan, and started to make semiconductors. However, as a high-tech industry, the semiconductor industry not only requires extensive technical accumulation, but also requires huge capital investment. Referring to a 3 nanometers process factory of TSMC, the startup capital alone needs 15 billion US dollars, and it may increase in the future. It can be seen that making chips requires not only huge startup capital, but also long-term and stable investment in order to continuously iterate technology. Whether it is TSMC, Samsung, or UMC, they have all been deeply involved in the field of semiconductor wafer manufacturing for many years. Only by relying on huge investment from consortia or the government can they maintain their leading position in the industry. In the past, a large number of speculative capital who tried to obtain short-term profits left the market, which is a good thing for the long-term development of China's semiconductor industry. Timely stop losses also avoid repeated investment and unnecessary competition. However, large-scale divestment will bring pains to the domestic semiconductor industry. After all, the domestic wafer industry has just started. Facing such a large-scale divestment, it must be a big deal for semiconductor companies that still need a lot of external financial support at this stage. Setbacks Western countries have increased industry restrictions. Not long ago, Japanese media said that Japan will also follow the United States and increase restrictions on China in the semiconductor field. In the impression of many people, Japan does not seem to have a strong sense of presence in the semiconductor field. However, in many subdivided fields, especially in the field of semiconductor materials, many Japanese companies occupy leading positions, and even some fields have completed monopoly. The characteristics of the industry play a vital role in areas that cannot be seen or even ignored. Take hydrogen fluoride, which is indispensable for wafer etching, 
as an example. Japan will cut off its supply to South Korea in 2021. A semiconductor giant like Samsung, which is completely closed loop from R&D design to manufacturing packaging and testing, has to bow its head and ask the government to come forward to resolve it and ensure the necessary supply. In the field of lithography machines that we are familiar with, even if it cannot match the Netherlands ASML in advanced manufacturing processes, Japan's Nikon can also be the top three in the industry. After the United States and the Netherlands restricted ASML from selling lithography machines to China, Japanese lithography machines have become one of our few options. But now Japan will follow the United States and strengthen restrictions on China in the semiconductor field, which will bring us a lot of trouble, at least in the field of lithography machines. I am afraid that the supply will be cut off. China's wafer gap continues to increase. In 2022, which has already ended, China's imports of chips have reached an astonishing 400 billion US dollars, hitting a record high again. This reflects that there is still a huge gap in China's semiconductor market. Even if domestic semiconductor companies represented by SMIC are actively increasing efficiency and expanding production, the domestic semiconductor industry's production capacity is still unable to meet market demand. At present, emerging industries such as electric vehicles and smart AI products have greatly increased the demand for chips. Taking an electric vehicle as an example, it needs more than 5,000 onboard chips of various sizes. These onboard chips are mainly concentrated in the wafer 14 to with the mature 40 nanometers process. There is no technical bottleneck for the domestic leading chip manufacturers, and it only needs to spend more effort on yield improvement. The surge in demand for chips with a large number of mature processes is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for our semiconductor industry. On the one hand, for more advanced wafer manufacturing processes, Domestic leading semiconductor companies represented by SMIC will naturally increase their research and development efforts to seek iterative updates for smaller nanoprocess wafers. In the mature process field represented by the company, domestic fabs can further improve the yield rate, increase the scale of production, and narrow the gap in the domestic market as much as possible. After all, as the market for consumer electronics products such as mobile phones weakens, many advanced process products have excess capacity, while mature process semiconductor products are in short supply. Blind pursuit of advanced process does not meet the needs of the current chip market. Perhaps now Bill Gates has indeed overestimated China's semiconductor companies, and we are far from as powerful as he said. After all, TSMC has been established for 36 years, UMC has been established for 43 years, Samsung Semiconductor has been established for 40 years, and the mainland only had SMIC in 2000. The development of the semiconductor industry has never been achieved overnight. Regardless of insufficient funds, it is impossible to gain a foothold in the world semiconductor industry without decades of technology accumulation. Instead of writing a lot about some of the achievements at this stage, or even attracting some short-term investment to the industry to collect money, it is better to focus on research and development and cultivate more talents in the semiconductor industry. Only in this way can China Chip really feel proud.